Hi guys, welcome to Edureka. This is Lakbir, and in today's session, we will cover the topic of UiPath Orchestrator, and we will see how we can execute robots either attended or unattended. So stick till the end of this video to see everything in action. But before we begin, if you are new to this channel, do consider subscribing as we upload new videos on leading technologies every day. Also, hit the like button. And if you are looking to get in-depth knowledge about the RPA or robotic process automation, check out the links in the description below. So let's define our agenda for today. We will see what is UiPath Orchestrator, followed by the capabilities of the orchestrator. Then we will look at some of the use cases of it and how it is being used in the industry to streamline processes and make them efficient. And lastly. we will have a demo session in which we will execute a robot using the ui path orchestrator so let's begin what is ui path orchestrator well the ui path orchestrator is essentially a web app that is a centralized application which allows for orchestration and execution of repetitive business processes by using ui path robots the orchestrator manages the creation monitoring scheduling and automatically controlling bots and processes now let's see the capabilities of ui path orchestrator the first is provisioning which establishes and maintains the connection among multiple bots and the web application deployment it ensures that it delivers the correct package versions to the assigned robots for execution configuration the job here is to look after the maintenance and delivery of robots environment and process configurations queues it ensures that work is automatically distributed among different robots next monitoring monitoring manages user permissions and keeps the track of robot information and other relevant details logging logging stores the logs in an indexed database such as sql and lastly interconnectivity this functions as a centralized contact point for third party solutions or apps now let's see some use cases for the ui path orchestrator the ui path has proven itself very useful in multiple sectors some of the most notable ones are banking and manufacturing industry because repetitive processes are common among multiple industries some of the ways ui path has been implemented are for loan processing applications where loan applications are automatically read and even sent for approval to the employees it also works in a similar way for credit or debit card activation insurance claims processes and for vendors payments as these processes are automated the companies end up saving money and improve efficiency of their existing business processes now let's move on to running a process using the ui path orchestrator firstly as you can see here i have one of my ui path projects open let's see what this project does so it logs into my gmail using the imap method then it extracts the top first message and then it pops up a message box with the subject line as you can see here now to get this running from the orchestrator what you need to do is log in to your ui path account and go to admin and then orchestrator let's see how we can do that so here i am already logged in to my ui path automation cloud as you can see here so i'll click on admin and then under the tenants i'll click on the orchestrator service now the first thing or the first step for us is to connect our ui path assistant with the orchestrator to do this what we need to do is go to ui path assistant and see how we can connect so let's open ui path assistant first so i'll click here and then under preferences we need to go to orchestrator settings here we need to choose the machine key type and then we need to connect this with the orchestrator so to our machine what we need to do is go to the tenant and then click on machines 
So as of now, we don't have any machine added. So we will be adding our own machine in here. So to do that, we'll click on add machine and select standard machine. For the name, we have to provide this machine name and then copy this name here and we'll paste it. And since this is a community edition, the number of production and testing can only go up to one and then we'll provision it. Now, what we find here is that we have a machine key and this is what we need to paste into our UI path assistant. So copy this and then click on here and here under machine key, we will be pasting this machine key and for the UI path orchestrator URL, what we need to do is we need to copy this till the default tenant name and what we'll do is we'll copy this and paste this under here and then we click on connect. So it says here that we are connected. Now what we need to do is we'll create a folder in which we will be uploading our project. So to do that, we'll click on tenant under tenants. We need to go to folders and here we'll create a new separate folder. So I'll name this folder as demo RPA and then I'll click create. Sorry, my mistake. This doesn't need to be branched out. So I'll just create a new folder with the demo RPA one name. And then I'll click on create. And now I have my folder created. Now under the machines, I click on manage machines and folder. And now it shows me my machine. So I'll click on this and I'll click update. So what I'm essentially doing here is I'm connecting this folder and this UI path assistant so that whenever a project gets executed, it will use my own machine to execute the project. Now under the users, what I need to do is I need to make sure that I can run my system in unattended setup. So to do that, I have clicked here and then what we need to do is we need to provide it the domain and the username which you can find by typing who am I in your CMD. So as you can see, I'll type this in again and I get the same output. So what you need to do is you need to copy this and if you don't have this information, then you have to paste it. And then if you don't have any passwords, as in my case, just remove this and click on update. So what this setting has done is that it has made sure that the orchestrator can run our project in unattended mode. Now what I need to do is we need to upload our project. So to do that first, if you're not logged in, log into your UiPath studio and then select your appropriate folder. So in my case, it doesn't show my demo RPA. So let me just close this and we'll try to load it again. Okay, so the project is now loaded and what we need to do is we need to publish our project. So before that happens, our folder, which was demo RPA one. Now, now that I selected demo RPA one, what will happen is that when I publish my project, it will get published into this location. So let's do that. So I'll click on publish and then we get this box. Now for the package name, I'll change this to message pop and then I won't be changing any other details and then I'll hit publish here. Okay. We get a confirmation message saying the project has been published. So let's hit OK and now let's go to the UI path orchestrator and let's run this activity. Let's go here and if you see here, you should be able to see under machines that we have added a machine here. And now what we need to do is that we need to go to automations. So click on demo RPA one and click on automations. So here as of now, there's no process that can be run. So we are going to change that. So click on add process and select your package. So as you can see here, 
we get a message pop package. And if you want to know where this package is, what we can do is that you can go here to your orchestrator, which I'll just show you in a minute. So click on tenant and click on packages. So here you will find a list of packages that you have published. So as you can see, just a minute ago, we published the message pop. So again, let's go to demo RPA and let's add this process. So I'll select my package source, which is message pop and click on next. And here, since I don't have any dependencies, I'll just click on next and change it a little bit. Message pop display name. I'll type in something like get Gmail subject line. I'll change my job priority to high. Now I'll click create and then we get a message saying your process was added to this folder. Now to execute this process, what you need to do is that you need to click on this button and it says start a job. So essentially what is going to happen here is that the project is gonna run on the system which was added in the UI path orchestrator and it is going to get executed using the UI path assistant. So if I click on this, we should get this message box. And now for this, I'll select my user account, which is this and the machine that I previously added, which is this. Now I'll click on start and essentially what should happen is that I should be greeted with the subject line, which I have. So let's wait for the process to get executed. And as you can see, the state here is now changed and it says running. Okay, for some reason, it is taking a lot more time than I expected. But we should be able to see the output of the project in some time. So it gives me a message box saying data science with Python certification course is now available, which should exactly be something that exists in my inbox. So as you can see, this title matches with the message box, which means that the project was successfully executed. And as you can see here, the state is now showing successful, which means that the project was successfully executed. So guys with that, the demo is concluded. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any specific questions, feel free to drop a comment below. And if you would like to see some projects done in UiPath, check out our other videos. Until then, see you next time. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!